There's a war raging in cotton fields across the south. The rival factions are farmers against insect pests. Every year in Texas alone, boll weevils, aphids, and boll worms gobble up an average of 600,000 bales of cotton. That's over 150 million pair of jeans. Fortunately, farmers have a number of allies who instinctively know the enemy and his battle theater. These native guerrilla fighters are the naturally occurring beneficial insects, spiders, and diseases found in any cotton field. Recognizing and using these important allies is an important management tactic for the wise farmer. Come with us as we push toward the front lines of this ongoing struggle. We'll introduce you to many of the good bugs or natural enemies that call cotton fields home. You will learn to take full advantage of these natural enemies and their ability to combat insect pests. Starting in the 40s, producers used insecticides in the old shotgun approach of weekly applications. This wholesale slaughter led to high costs, environmental contamination, and insecticide-resistant bugs. By the 70s, farmers realized they were losing the battle and shifted to an integrated pest management, or IPM approach, of use without abuse. Until the IPM revolution, the only good bug was a dead bug. IPM encourages an environmentally sound strategy incorporating cultural controls, selective insecticides, and the use of natural enemies to control pests. Why the increased interest in biological control in cotton? First, where the boll weevil has been eradicated, fewer insecticide treatments are now necessary. Natural enemies thrive in a reduced insecticide environment and play a greater role in controlling other cotton pests. Second, the effectiveness of natural enemies in controlling beet army worms, aphids and boll worms, and bud worms has become apparent. Also, predators can help control boll worms and bud worms, which survive on BT cotton, helping these varieties perform even better. Finally, new insecticides are available that are easier on natural enemies. This boon lets growers protect natural enemies and take full advantage of biological control of other pests. Now, let's follow a furrow and meet some of the more noted natural pest fighters. Put on your glasses or reach for a magnifying glass because you'll need them to see these soldiers. The first group we'll meet is the predators. They're the snipers of the insect world. Like guerrilla fighters, predators hunt their prey. Some simply run their quarry down, while others, like spiders, sit and wait in ambush. Spiders love to dine on all kinds of plant bugs and caterpillars. Some even snack on bollworm eggs. Many spiders call the cotton crop home, but most of the cotton crowd do not build webs. The lynx spider is the classic predator. Like its namesake, this guy has long, thin legs armed with long spines that let him aggressively chase down prey. Crab spiders are just the opposite. They hide and wait to ambush hapless insects. These spiders look like crabs with their long, curved front legs. They even crawl backwards or sideways like the ocean variety. Jumping spiders combine the two tactics. They stalk, then suddenly attack. They have stout and hairy bodies and are sometimes a metallic green or purple color. Lady beetles are another common predator class. They prefer aphids, but will also dine on other small, soft-bodied insects. The convergent lady beetle, so-called because of the two white converging lines behind the head, is common in cotton. The immature stage, or larva, of the lady beetle devours aphids like a kid eating popcorn at the movies. The larva looks like a black alligator with orange spots. The seven-spotted lady beetle, the pink-spotted lady beetle, and the harmonia lady beetle are also found in cotton. Like the convergent lady beetle, all devour aphids. The skimness lady beetle is much smaller than the convergent variety and lacks spots. Like her larger cousins, she loves aphids, mites, and other small insects. The skimness larva has long, white, waxy filaments on their body, and that makes them look like a tuft of cotton. They are usually found happily munching their way through the nearest aphid colony. 
Two look-alike predators are the minute pirate bug and the insidious flower bug. For convenience, both are often called aureus. As adults, these bugs are black with a white X pattern on the back and generally hang out in the cotton blooms. Their sharp beak lets them stab their prey and suck out all the juices, soda straw fashion. Immature aureus are shaped like the adult bugs and are yellow-orange when first hatched. They later turn tan to dark brown. They often hide in the terminal buds of cotton plants. Pirate bugs and insidious flower bugs eat thrips, small bullworms, budworms, and other small soft-bodied insects. They also eat beet armyworm eggs, small caterpillars, and cotton pollen. The big-eyed bug, so-called because of its large, bulging eyes, is another predator ally you'll likely find in the cotton battle zone. It has long, sharp mouth parts used to stab and suck prey dry. Adults are gray to black. The immature or nymph of the big-eyed bug looks like an adult without wings. Nymphs and adults eat all sorts of insect critters. They prefer dinner to be small and soft-bodied. Predator troops you'll be less likely to see are damsel bugs and assassin bugs. Like pirate bugs and big-eyed bugs, they have long, sharp mouth parts. The adult green lacewing is a delicate, slender insect about one-half to three-quarters of an inch long. They are green with long antenna and golden eyes. The large, delicate wings are laced with a network of veins. Adults of some species eat insects, while other species feed only on nectar and pollen. Lacewing eggs are deposited at the top of a long, slender thread attached to a leaf or stem. The lacewing larva is shaped like an alligator. Its long, sickle-shaped mouthparts are used to stab its insect prey and suck out its juices. Lacewing larvae feed on aphids, insect eggs, mites, and small caterpillars. Parasites are the second group of natural enemy commandos doing battle for the farmer. Many parasites in cotton are either flies or tiny wasps. Parasites are different from predators in that parasites require only one host for development. Also, while predators attack many different kinds of insects, parasites usually zero in on only one species of pest. A tiny parasite with the very long name of Lysiphlebus testicipes attacks the cotton aphid. This tiny black wasp lays her egg inside the victim with her specialized stinger. The egg hatches into a grub which feeds inside the living aphid. In about a week, the aphid dies, swells up, and turns brown. The swollen aphid is called a mummy. Soon the adult wasp cuts a hole in the mummy and emerges to repeat the cycle. The mini wasps, like most parasites, are hard to see, but the presence of mummies in aphid colonies alerts the grower that parasites are patrolling the area. Bullworms, budworms, armyworms, and other caterpillars are attacked by other, larger parasitic wasps. These wasps are not commonly seen in the field. They can be best detected by collecting larvae and rearing them to determine if a parasite emerges. Pathogens or diseases form our last allied battalion. Bacteria, fungi, and viruses can inflict great harm by causing vast epidemics in the pest population. Aphids are sometimes hit by the fungal disease called neozygitis. The fungus grows inside the aphid, which dies in three to four days. Aphids killed by this disease can be recognized in the colony by a gray fuzzy mold covering their bodies. This fungus sometimes spreads rapidly across the field, massacring the aphid population. Caterpillars are sometimes killed by a virus called nuclear polyhydrosis virus, or NPV. Infected caterpillars feed less, become sluggish, and die in five to 12 days. Dead caterpillars hang from leaf tips and are easily broken open, spilling virus-contaminated liquid onto leaves, which other caterpillars contact. Now that we have met our insect allies, how can they be mustered for further service in the war against insect pests? 
This can be done using a three-part battle plan. First, natural enemies can be imported from other countries into the U.S. to combat a specific pest. Several natural enemy warriors have been imported from Mexico, the native home of the boll weevil. Unfortunately, none survive to give much control. Some natural enemies are mass reared or collected and sold for release. Lady beetles and tiny trichogramma wasps are sometimes promoted for use in cotton. Unfortunately, research shows these releases give little benefit because they're too expensive at effective levels. Conserving natural enemies already present in the cotton field offers the greatest biological control potential. These natural enemies are entrenched and well adapted to the field. They just need a little help. Natural enemies can be conserved by minimizing insecticides and by using insecticides that are effective against the pest but less toxic to natural enemies. Another important aspect of conservation is habitat surrounding cotton. Many important natural enemies like lady beetles, spiders and pirate bugs found in cotton are also found in surrounding fields. Sorghum, for example, planted near cotton, provides a source of natural enemies. Also, use of insecticides only when necessary in sorghum can preserve this source of natural enemies. To fully appreciate how well your allies are doing, it's necessary to take a head count every now and then. As with cotton pests, scouting the field to find out how many natural enemies are present can help farmers make better pest management decisions. But how can insects as secretive as your allies be counted? Simply looking at a plant is a good way to find evidence of parasites such as aphid mummies and cotija cocoons. However, you'll miss many of the important predators because they're so small or hidden. Others, like spiders, run before being seen. It's easy to see why visual inspection is not very reliable for sampling predators. The beet bucket method is much better. All that's needed is a clean white five gallon plastic bucket and a little stealth. Carefully approach the plant to be sampled, but don't let your shadow fall across it. Grasp the plant near its base and quickly bend it into the bucket. Beat the plant against the side of the bucket eight to 10 times. This should shake any predators loose from the plant. Remove the plant and you can easily see the predators against the white sides of the bucket. The bucket is deep enough to let you see your allies before they escape. Record your findings, release your catch, and head for the next plant. We hope you now have a better appreciation of biological insect control in cotton using natural enemies as allies. Remember that biological control allies include three battalions, predators, parasites, and pathogens. Their conservation is an increasingly important part of cotton pest management. You have learned to identify many of the important natural enemies in our battleground foray. You've even learned to use a beet bucket to census your frontline warriors. But there is still much to be learned about natural enemies. Since this business of trying to save good bugs so they can do away with bad bugs is relatively new, research is still needed to determine how we can use natural enemies more effectively against cotton pests. We also must learn how natural enemies spend the winter and how numbers in cotton can be increased. As these answers surface, we can begin to turn the fight over to those who do it best, our allies, the natural enemies. If you would like to learn more about using biological controls in cotton, contact your Texas Agricultural Extension Service County Extension Agent. They can provide publications and advice to help you win the fight against cotton pest. You can also visit us on the internet at the address on the screen.